very much for inviting me. Um, some of you will know about the Book of Deer, which is in Cambridge University. <coughs> it's a small illuminated manuscript. It's a pocket gospel, so it's tiny, and it was meant probably for uh, somebody to carry around with them, uh, possibly not in religious services, um, but maybe for private use. Uh, but the interest for us in, in Aberdeenshire is that um, around about a thousand, um, the earliest Gaelic, so either um, Gaelic or, or Middle Irish, was written into the margins and the, the uh, empty bits of the book. And they talk about uh, land holdings in a monastery at Deer uh, around about this period. Now, um, the Deer Abbey, so I'm calling it the Monastery of Deer is the early one, Deer Abbey, which is there now, which is scheduled, which is the, well, the foundations are there for people to go and see just to the west side of Mintlaw. Uh, it dates from 1219. So we're looking for this monastery, which is supposedly where this earliest Gaelic uh, was written. And these are some images from it. So just you see the, the Gospels um, on, the, on the left at the top. I love the little margins, little marginalia and the little animals drawn. So in, in the bottom left, um, I'm just seeing if I can, there you go. Bottom left, lovely little animals and little squiggles and things. And this thing in the bottom right here. Well, I don't know. Carnix? No, I don't think so. And then you can see the, the Gaelic is written here. Um, now, I'm not an expert on the book, so if anybody's got a technical question about the book, I, will, I can get back to you with the answer. But essentially, um, that's the sort of what the book is about. And there's been a lot of studying done of the book. Uh, Catherine Forsyth edited uh, papers at a conference a number of years ago, which looked into all aspects of the book itself, um, which I'm not going to go into the whether the Gaelic is poorly written and why it's poorly written, why we can't read some of it, or anything else about where the book was made. Is it Scottish? Is it Irish? don't know. But basically for this short talk, is this is the map showing the lands that are mentioned in um, the marginalia and also the, um, you know, some of the place names in the area. And so just to show you that they, they would have had huge amounts of lands, of course, at that time, and um, to orient yourself, sort of Deer Abbey at the, on the eastern edge, Old Deer Parish Church, um, which I'm going to be showing you what we've been doing. And so what are we looking for? I mean, we don't really know. There's nothing much in Aberdeenshire that would be similar. Um, we've obviously got Port Mahomach, Inchmarnock, places like that that we've been looking to to determine would, it, would, it, would they be stone? I mean, if you know Aberdeenshire, it's an incredibly stony place. They built everything of stone. Um, but there are wooden buildings, obviously Bronze Age, Iron Age, circular buildings. Um, how many buildings were there? How many monks? Anything like that. We just don't know any of these. Um, and so it's been quite an interesting uh, search. Um, some of you, a lot of you will have seen about um, the, the cell at Iona, which the wood was recently dated from a, the 1957 excavation. Um, you know, are we looking for something like this, which would have some stone structure and some wood? Um, are we looking for stone cells, beehive cells, for example? Um, we just don't know. Obviously, the sorts of things, um, material culture we might find, um, are these sorts of things. This is Port Mahomet, metalworking, leather, um, vellum working, um, this, these sorts of buildings. You know, these are all the possible structures that we could be looking for. And of course, things like cross slabs. This is recent work by the Murrays at Tullach. Um, there were several cross slabs known, several more, plus the ditch around the old churchyard. I mean, there's a, there's a, you know, there are a number of sites that could be comparable to what we're looking for at Deer. In Shmarnik, of course. I had all the volunteers looking for every flat stone, every slate. They were cleaning them. I showed them pictures of this, um, this slate, and they were all, like, frantically looking. I haven't found anything yet, but... but the fun is in the looking, of course. Um, so the Book of Deer project has been going for around about 10 years officially, although, of course, people have been talking about it for a lot longer. Um, and so um, we've looked at various different sorts of settlements. And we've looked at some what we thought were later prehistoric sites. Possibly they would have reused a later prehistoric site. Um, this was an interesting one because um, we thought it might be a late prehistoric site, but it actually turned out to be a late 19th, early 20th century military training site um, when we excavated it. So we found some really fascinating things on our, on our search. Uh, we've also done huge amounts of walking. So I've walked with lots of the group over particular areas where we thought there might be something, lumps and bumps. Um, 
into looking at wells on the left this is actually the the landowner of one of the huge estates up there and he said he knew where there was this particular well and he took his tramping through all these streams and it's great fun and the group are really involved in this you know that not just looking in one way but really looking across the landscape to see where there's possible areas where this monastery might have been We've done quite a lot of work in Old Deer, and this illustrates, um, well, initially uh, guard archaeology were involved, and so the, what is it, the sort of light blue turquoise colour trenches are guard archaeology's trenches uh, from 2008. And then the Murrays were involved for a few years, um, and they're the dark blue trenches. So basically what we were trying to do in Old Deer was to dig trenches to look and see if there was a possibility this old village was the location of the um, the monastery. We came along and we did, oh, what have I done, mine in, in, in red, so we did some more trenches um, in 2016 as part of this work. And the village of Old Deer has built up around this medieval church. We had great fun in the village. We went into people's gardens. I knocked on somebody's door. The little girl who's in the middle of this, the little girl in the black there, she came to the door and she went, oh, you're the archaeology wifey. <laughs> she actually said that. And that has made my whole life. That is just so good. And then, of course, her mum and dad could not stop us digging trenches in their garden. And, of course, the kids helped. And we did loads of this wonderful, everybody's been talking about this, this community archaeology, which a lot of people are doing. And it's so fantastic. Um, but what we found out about Old Deer is that although the medieval church dates to the 12th century, we found nothing earlier in any of our test pits, so hundreds of test pits all over the place, um, nothing earlier than the 12th century. And in fact, not much of the 12th century either. But this is the church, so on the bottom right here, the remains of the rebuilt 12th century church. And we had Richard Fawcett out. This is him on the top right. He was fascinated by obviously some of the stonework, but we had him out to do a report and research on, on, into the church, and he couldn't see anything which dated to early in the 12th century. Um, and we have done some trenches within the graveyard to see if we could find um, earlier structures. We had a geophysical survey done first, and um, that was just was done by Rose Geophysics. And when she sent me the results, she didn't say anything, she just emailed me this report, and of course I opened it, and in red here, look at that apse there, and then the rectangular, okay. Um, and we got incredibly excited. But we knew there was lots of graves. This is the late 19th century lair plan for that. So you can see we've superimposed. So we spent a lot of time looking at where we might put trenches, and we did find a few places. The picture on the left here is to show you these people are sitting at the edge of the graveyard, and there's about up to two metres of soil have been deposited in the late 18th century on, in this graveyard when that 1780 church was built in the background. And so we were having to dig down quite a depth before we got, and that is obviously not, health and safety wise, not possible. So we picked places where we could get to potentially earlier archaeology uh, without, well, obviously digging through any articulated burials or health and safety nightmare. Um, and we did find places. But unfortunately, that apse shape is made up of a layer of mortar which was spread post-medieval in date and then had been cut through by graves and it had made that pattern there. So all of that that you see there is to do with post-1700 or so activity on the site. And of course, we found lots of... Uh, well, this is, the, this is the mortar here which has been cut on either side by graves. Uh, we obviously didn't dig into any graves. But um, so that was all made up by this. So never get too excited by the geophysics until that's my the lesson. But we did find out a huge amount about the, the graveyard and the church rebuildings and lots of plaster from different periods and gravestones and, and bits and pieces like that. Um, and obviously lots of disarticulated human bones that we put back again uh, after studying them with all our volunteers. And so after spending a number of years looking at different places, uh, I became involved, well, this, is, this will be my fifth year involved, but last year, after we'd spent time in Old Deer and looked in various places, I decided that we should go back and look around Deer Abbey itself, because although the Cistercians, which is what Deer Abbey is, generally built on a greenfield site, 
the area where Deer Abbey is, so this is, I've got the arrow pointed here to the Abbey, and this is the scheduled area that's grass cut. But, but actually, round about it is an early 19th century walled garden, a huge walled garden. I actually don't know how many hectares it is, but it's, it's very large. And so decided to look at this area again with the possibility that this might be the um, area where the earlier monastery had been. There's obviously places like Kouris, which have got an earlier monastery on the site of a later Cistercian. So it's not, they don't always choose Greenfield, but... Um, so we went on the basis that it was possible that the, the area was large enough for them to, to, be, to be a monastery and then replaced by an abbey. Again, Rose Geophysics came up and did radar and resistance survey over, including the scheduled area, which is fantastic, but I haven't really had a chance to look at that yet. We're, we're not considering that as the site, so they wouldn't have built on the same site, but there's wonderful information in the radar there um, underneath the scheduled building. But this is the plot of the area round about, and um, you can see immediately the dark lines are, these are the early 19th century paths which were put in by the landowner who tidied up Deer Abbey, um, uh, probably relayed some of the foundations. The church isn't actually rectangular, it's slightly off, and he's, he, did, he, did a, he did a lot of work and made it into this fantastic walled garden. But there's quite a number of wonderful anomalies that we were uh, we wanted to target, and this is what we did last year, um, looking at um, area six, area seven. Well, and we also looked at nine, and also down here, uh, nearer the river. So at the bottom of that picture, that's where the South Yugi River runs. And so we did an excavation uh, at the site last year, lots of volunteers uh, and schools, and. You can see here we've got the Ferguson Wall, the, the late uh, early 19th century wall, and we found buildings in two of the trenches. Um, this is the trench that was down by the river, which was just had been flooded all the time. There'd been a mill there. Um, I got them to deturf it on a day that was really, really wet, so they didn't get cold. And then once we'd done that, I let them go home. So, uh, <laughs> so that was all of them. But no, no archaeology at all. And one trench, which was between halfway down the slope from the uh, upper terrace down to the river, we found that it had been filled up with huge amounts of uh, rubbish, basically medieval and more recent rubbish. We were digging down and we found lots of human bones, lots of lovely stonework. You can see here one of our volunteers, well, archaeology students, looking at all this through all this stonework. Um, but then we found down about 1.1 metre some bits of plant, 19th century plant pot. So we know that area had been quite boggy and we think it was just built up with material, probably in the early 19th century when this area was cleared and tidied. They just put all this human bone, all this rubble, and built up the, the area inside the wall garden. So that we, we, we closed that trench. We were doing all this uh, while being filmed by the BBC. BBC Alba uh, got a production company to, to film it. Some of you may have seen the programme. But um, very, I mean, not invasive photography. So we said we weren't going to repeat at doing anything. I actually had to repeat one walk. I'm not a very good walker, you know. I obviously didn't walk in the right way, and she asked me just to repeat one walk. But apart from that, everything that was on the programme was as it happened. If they weren't there and we found something, well, that's it. But this was them, another picture here. So, but the fluffy microphone thing was always stuck up you, you know. And uh, I had a, was carrying a microphone in my back pocket quite a lot of the time. So when you went to the toilet, you had to be very careful that you weren't carrying the microphone that was on. But, and so in the two trenches, we found, well, the first thing is that the topsoil was incredibly deep. It had been in this garden, and it took us a huge length of time to get down. And we'd only planned, um, I think it was nine days for the dig altogether. And so once we got down, about the second last, the third, third last day to really interesting archaeology in this trench. Um, we've obviously got this, the natural, you can see the, the clay in the foreground here. And then the bottom here, it took us ages to get this, uh, so many finds, medieval pottery and various things within that. It took us a long time to get down to um, the, the actual archaeology. An interesting thing, not actually related specifically to the monastery, but we were getting all this handmade pottery that, of course, we thought oh, I thought was Bronze Age. I was sending pictures to people, and um, but I, we had um, after the well, during the post excavation, we had uh, this piece um, on the left. We had it, uh, the residue carbon fourteen dated to twelve seventy six to thirteen ninety five A D, and so this is a sort of a Kragan type handmade pottery. 
which um, we have to do more research on, but it's not known in Aberdeenshire as far as I know. And I'm wondering if we're finding pottery on sites, we're assuming it's Bronze Age, but um, this is an interesting sort of sideline to that, that I was just looking across at Derek Hall there, but I'll, she'll have to discuss that with him. But um, And so on the last day of the dig, we'd actually not really got down properly to the features, but we could see the top of a structure here. So there are post holes um, here, here. You can see one little one that we excavated, and then post holes running under here, but there's this stone spread on the left-hand side of the picture where there was loads of medieval pottery in it. And I made the decision we weren't going to just excavate something quickly, but that we were going to take to come away and come back another time to do further work on that. Uh, and in the second trench, um, we found a half with a huge spread of charcoal all around it and a semicircular structure, which is like a sort of a windbreak type structure made by stakes into the ground. Um, and here you can see it from another angle. So you've got a very shallow ditch um, with lots of stake holes in the in the bottom of it um, on the north side of the structure. So maybe um, a half furnace working area with this windbreak around it uh, and a detail of the hearth here. And again, so we've had the hearth dated, the charcoal within the hearth itself dated 1147 to 1260. Very tantalising, obviously, because that straddles the monastic period and the abbey, which was 1219. So this is not the definite evidence that we have found earlier structure. This might be a structure that was related to the construction of the abbey around the early 13th century. Um, and you can see in the plan here, we excavated part of that building. And this is a reconstruction done by Jan Dunbar, who some of you will know. Um, this is just the interior, as, as, we, as we thought, with the hearth and then these, so you've got a wattle structure around on the north side, but, and then a, through the middle of the building, there was a much more, um, a, a, like a little line of stake holes, which we thought might have held something like a hide screen or uh, extra uh, windbreak. And one of the things that the Book of Deer does really well, um, and they're all very keen on the education, we've talked about community archaeology, um, and so we get as many schools as groups as possible involved in all the work that we do. Um, and so this is a secondary class. Uh, the secondary classes are much more difficult to get, you know, fitting into their timetabling. But um, we've, this, we've, we've decided that we're going to go back and do an, another excavation this summer. That's the dates, if anybody wants to come, the 24th of June to the 8th of July. And um, well, then we applied for heritage lottery money to do this year's... Um, excavation and we just heard a few days ago that we got the money to do that so we're going to have a big excavation planned we've got um so far 15 primary and secondary schools booked over the uh, 15 days of the dig and uh, i'm going to get a jcb in to start as well because now we know that the soils are so deep we're not going to be digging all that by hand uh, and we've got open days on the 1st and the 7th of july um, the things we do with the kids, we get them doing lots of digging, lots of planning, lots of all the different aspects of, of archaeology. These are just some nice pictures, obviously, of the kids doing different um, activities. Um, and inside work as well, so looking at finds, drawing, and uh, we're always trying to get them to do the paperwork as well, which we always say is essential, it has to be done, but they're not so keen on that. They like, I just want to stay, they just want to stay digging, but... We do get them doing bits of paperwork as well. Uh, and so the 2018 dig, we're going to go back and we're going to excavate a bit more of the building with the hearth. Uh, I had wondered if there's a possibility that we just picked up the north side of it. If on the south side there might be a more substantial structure, it might be not necessarily be round or circular. Um, and that was in the top left in what was called trench two. And then in trench one, we're going to open up a much bigger trench, see if we can get the whole of that building and obviously then um, excavate some of the post holes and hopefully get dating for that. Um, and we're hoping that it will be monastery. We've got other trenches planned in different areas. With this, this, there's anomalies all over here, which potentially could be other structures. Um, but to be honest, even if it's the um, buildings that were put into uh, service, the early abbey, you know, to do with metalworking, stoneworking, all of that, I mean, that would be amazing too. And... Um, if we don't find it, then it means that I'll just have to be employed for longer to carry on looking for it, really. I keep saying to them, it's the looking for it that's the, you know, if we find it, then what, what are we going to do? But, um, and so this year, we've got extra activities. We've got this wonderful storyteller in Aberdeenshire. 
who's going to do stories for the kids based on Pango Bound, the white monk's cat. And she's going to talk about how the, the mon what the monastery was like based on following the white cat around the, the monastery. Um, but if, if you haven't seen that, it's a fantastic little poem, wonderful images. Um, and um, I haven't been given my five-minute notice yet, so have I talked very quickly? So I'm nervous, so I talk quickly, so... But, no, that's fine. Okay, good. Perfect. Uh, and so, obviously, I just want to thank everybody who's taken part in the project and um, the Heritage Lottery and Aberdeenshire Council, who have been incredibly supportive, including, obviously, some funding towards various aspects of the project. So, uh, And this is my, one of my favourite pictures. When we were working in Old Deer in the 1780s church, they obviously asked us to take our boots off. And so we were sitting in this fantastic room, having our tea with our flasks. And I came in one day, the, I was the last, and all the boots were sitting there. So I thought that's a really nice, you know, but uh, yeah, we get dirty, but we have to keep the places clean. Thank you very much.